store. <laughs> the co-op is busy. Sales were up 38% last year to $2.5 million. General Manager Jolene Cook compares that growth rate with more than 100 co-ops around the country. Turns out the Reno co-op's growth is nearly four times what the National Cooperative Grocers Association considers healthy. There's a little bit of sympathy for the staff. It is really quite stressful to not have the systems or the things in place, you know, that when you're growing at that rate. Cook says the store needs a protocol for dealing with customers, more cash registers, more parking, and suppliers that can handle the demand. Before, when we were younger, it was like anybody that had anything that was local was like, come on down, bring it on over, you know, the more the better. Now, she says, the co-op has to screen suppliers. The growing pains are welcome. Cook hopes to turn a profit this year for the first time. Kai Plaskon, Capital Public Radio News. Jolene Cook, General Manager. Uh, well, one of our end statements is to increase broad access to local and organic foods. So I think it's measuring an end. It's helping us achieve that end, is to be able to help people be able to shop here and have access to that local and organic food that we specialize in. Oh, uh, don't get me started. <laughs> um, I have a nutritionalist background, so I'd say any type of whole food, any food that doesn't have an ingredient label, it's, um, any natural food, anything that's like a fruit, a vegetable, uh, if you look at the bulk ingredients, it's one ingredient. You know, it's like whole grains or buck oats or oatmeal. Um, so yeah, anything that doesn't have an ingredient label. It's about 1% of our sales. Uh, we did 2.5 million this year, and it was about $25,000 worth of sales. Uh, so, but it's... Uh, it's more about just the fact that we accept it, you know, and that people can come here and use the food stamps to be able to um, buy whatever food they want to buy that they find here. We have really awesome local meat that I know some people come in specifically for to get, you know, on the food stamps and stuff. So, yeah. Super excited when I heard about the possibility of farmers being able to accept food stamps for two reasons. Basically, one, because it's helping the local farmer with increased sales, increased footfall, increased amount of people that would be able to buy from them. And second of all, it's helping people buy foods that are healthier, that are more nutritious, that actually grow in the ground. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're really precious and proud about the local stuff, but um, there's that to support, and there's also the idea of just supporting farmers in general. You know, it's a hard trade. Uh, it's only small, you know, decreasing, and the people that can do it and that are doing it. So yeah, anything that helps farmers um, success, you know, succeed is uh, something that we're up for. And we're definitely in support of. Farmers markets uh, have difficulty here in Nevada, would you say, or, or what? Ooh, um, no, I think that they're on the rise. I think that they're only increasing. Um, you know, Reno's kind of becoming known as a food hub, and I think that we have a, a solid part in that. And I hope that they're only um, growing in, in strength and numbers. All right. And so uh, can we talk really quickly about how you're one of the fastest growing in the nation? Yeah, or you sure. Hit me. Wait for stats on that? Okay, so why don't you well, tell me about that? When did you learn? Um, we are basically, we're an associate member of the, um, the NCGA. So basically it's a national organization. It's a co-op of co-ops. <laughs> so there's 137 co-ops that are part of it. And the cool thing about it is that you share your financial data, which can be somewhat intimidating when you're comparing yourself to the Sacramento co-op, for instance, that does $33 million in sales. But it's also um, incredibly educational as well as um, inspiring. You know, so what we learned when we are comparing our financial data with these other 130 co 30 plus co-ops in the country is that we have the highest, like one of the highest sales growth all over. Um, we've been in this new expanded location for two years, and just in quarter four, we were still growing at 28 percent, which is pretty phenomenal. That's a really, really solid. Anything over um, double digit is um, is great. So to grow at 28 percent is is a huge achievement. And so uh, what does that say to you? Do you need to do something different? Uh, continue doing what it is that you do? What, what would you say? Um, yeah, no, I don't think we need to do anything different. I think that in, ter in terms of like um, supporting our staff with training and education and customer service stuff and just the awareness that there's going to be more people coming in, um, that's kind of something where we're focusing on continuing to support the local farmers so that we get the production that we need, you know, communication with them and building systems so that people understand how they can get their food from the local, you know, community to us. Um, and then anything different? So you've only been here for two years. Are you already thinking that you need more cash registers or anything? <laughs> a little bit. Cash registers, maybe. Um, we kind of pride ourselves on being able to, you know, get people in and out of here as quickly as possible. Um, but no, I just had a specialist come in today. We did some developmental leading training and she was like, wow, you have a lot of room to grow in here. You know, we have a lot more space on our produce shelves downstairs. We have the community cafe that isn't quite open yet. That'll drive sales. So I think we'll be here for a good 
a good few more years. Uh, but yeah, then there's also the potential of getting into an expanded store, having a second store, stuff like that. So the, that growth is exciting. What do you have downstairs? You have, it's you, our offices. Yeah. Yeah, you can come down and check them out. That's why we're, we're changing it around right now. So. But you said that uh, the, the consultant said that you could put produce downstairs Oh, too? we have a produce cooler and a freezer, and that holds all of our like goods that come in, you know, um, keeps it chilled and at the right temps and stuff like that. And those aren't full. You know, they're not like crazy, you know, brimming at every end or whatever. So there's a lot of room for more more vegetables. And we just need more cu- more customers to come in and buy those vegetables. Oh, yeah. And so then you all, I almost have like a quarter of the entire store that's really not full of anything. Right? Yeah, well, I, that's something that I'm trying to work on. We're um, renting it out to community groups. Uh, we do, you know, for free for any nonprofit, uh, $25 for three hours for members. So it's a super affordable space. We just started doing yoga, tai chi. We've got weekly free workshops for folks to come on down and, you know, get educated about the things that we put on this week and we've got a dehydration basics thing going we have um, art classes that people pay to do and then we get a percentage of the sales and the that um, art gives um, to people who can't afford to do art classes and stuff like that so it's cool we're trying to use it as a, commu- a like a true community space where the community can come and utilize it was there any anything that uh, people said to you when they heard what kind of growth rate you had uh, that you need to think about in the future or anything? Um, I think that they've, there's a little bit of sympathy for the staff. It is really quite stressful to not have the systems or the things in place you know, that when you're growing at that rate. Um, so there's a little bit of sympathy and just a lot of excitement because when there's growth, there's you know more money, there's more money in the budget, there's more money in the budget hopefully to start making a profit. And then when we make that profit, we turn to the member owners and say, hey, what do you want to do with this? You know, Do you want to do patronage refund where the member owners would get a slice of that? Do you want to lower prices for everybody? Do you want to build a bigger parking lot? Do you want to have a farm it's really exciting so um, I can't think of anything that's cautioning just you know making sure that you have sound business practices in place and that you're managing the money because just because we're growing at that rate doesn't mean that we're making the money at that rate you know so just knowing that we're kind of you know uh, ensuring that all our spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff are up to snuff so what kinds of things do you uh, you said that there's sympathy for the staff and not having some things in place like give me some examples um, like we didn't, we don't have a customer service like protocol or anything to kind of go by. So it's just like, hey, say hi to every customer and be as nice as possible. But it's actually really important <laughs> that you know your staff know that they need to one, you know, fi- figure out what the customer wants. Two, bring them what they need and do it with enthusiasm and politeness and accuracy. You know, and three, go above and beyond. You know, that's really how we can differentiate ourselves as a small community-owned grocery store is to show that we really do care about the community. We care about each individual person. We care about them leaving the store happier than when they came here. And not a lot of other grocery stores or places can really do that except for I think you know smaller local businesses is there a time when you want people to come in and shop like I mean I think I came in yesterday at five or something and it was there was no parking yeah it gets pretty crazy during lunchtime we have a lunch rush and then we have just the after hours and stuff so anytime you want to come in from eight until ten and from two until four and then from seven until nine those are the best times Um, I would like to comment that we do have free parking on Flint Street which it does fill up but we are working currently working with the city to figure out a, a way to make that work so that there's like 24 minute parking like over at um, my favorite muffin because that helps people who are coming to get in to just do a quick grocery shop and they're going to be in and out and it's not going to help the people who are sitting you know here and then go down to the river for four hours or whatever so it is an issue but we are trying to figure out a solution for it so so if there were to be more parking would you think about something like a big parking garage you know that's not a bad idea because unfortunately a lot of people drive and so yeah we want to that is kind of a negative thing that we have to help dispel is that oh there's never parking there and that was before we ever even had flint street free and now we have flint street free but unfortunately some of the other um you know people are using it for other things than shopping here so we are currently working with the city to figure out how to kind of meter it or make sure it's free for a certain period of time that's conducive to grocery shopping any other growth growth challenges um growth challenges just staying true to our mission i mean the the mission of the co-op is to be a sustainable to promote um, and support the local food food system and be a sustainable co-op and that's kind of tricky you know you start to get before when we were younger it was like anybody that had anything that was local was like come on down bring it on over you know the more the better and now we're at a a rate where we have to kind of have systems in place to be able to educate the farmers and any consumers about what we want to have on the shelves we can't accept everything that's local now you know we have to be a little bit um not exclusive but um What's the word? Uh, Ticky. 
Yeah, like discerning maybe, or just ensure that those people can support it. Because, like, say we get a new baker in and we're super excited about it. We, we put a lot of time into pricing, marketing that, you know, all these types of things. And then in two weeks they go bust because they can't, afford, you know, they can't keep up with the rate or they don't have their systems in place. So there's a little bit of, like, that kind of fine balance of figuring out how to match business to business. And, um, and then just making sure we have enough time to, like, go out there and do the good work and talk to the farmers and kind of make sure that we are staying true to that because that's how we got here. And that's difficult when you get super busy and you're in a grocery store. It's hard to kind of, you know, do everything and, and do both equally at the same time. So.